President Muhammadu Bari has appointed two deputy governors of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories. At number one, President Muhammadu Bari has forwarded the names of Aisha Ahmed and Edward Adamu to the Senate for confirmation as deputy governors of the Central Bank of Nigeria. This was contained in a letter read on the floor during Tuesday's plenary by Senate President Ahmad Lawan. Bari asked the Senate to confirm the nominees to serve for a final term at the Apex Bank as deputy governors. In another letter, President Bari asked the upper chamber to confirm the appointment of Ambassador Ayuba Jacob as a member of the Revenue Mobilization Allocation and Fiscal Commission. At number two, Minister of Police Affairs Mohamed Maigari Dinyadi says President Muhammad Bari's administration has fully implemented the demands presented by NSAS protesters in October 2020. Maigari Dinyadi disclosed this on Tuesday in Abuja at the public dissemination of the post NSAS research and training of police oversight agencies on oversight mechanisms. He recalled that the five demands of the protesters, otherwise known as the 5 for 5 demands, were met starting with the disbanded Special Anti Robbery Squad. At number three, Human Rights Writers Association of Nigeria on Tuesday said the Nigerian Navy has failed in its constitutional role of protecting the nation's maritime borders and bringing all oil thieves to book and therefore should be restructured and unbundled. Rewa's National Coordinator Emmanuel Omubiko in a statement also demanded that President Muhammad Bari sack the Chief of Naval Staff Vice Admiral Awal Zabairu Gambo for his perpetual inability to tame the multi billion dollar oil theft business ongoing in the Niger Delta and other oil producing places. Puriwa's comments followed the Nigerian Navy's recent defense of the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited over insincere and exaggerated oil theft figures. At number 4, less than 48 hours after the reopening of the Abuja Kaduna Railway, the Kaduna train attack victims are demanding compensation from the federal government to enable them to restart life. The victims who spoke to journalists in Kaduna lamented that most of them lost their means of livelihood when they were in the custody of the terrorists who kidnapped them during the train attack. They also claim that the federal government is yet to fulfill the promises made to them shortly after meeting with President Muhammad Bari upon their release in October, noting that most of them are already suffering from depression and psychological disorders that require urgent medical attention. As number 5, Boko Haram terrorists said to be angry over the killing of their commander Malam Abu Bakr and 15 others in a deadly infighting have slaughtered 33 wives of the Islamic State of West African Province terrorists in Sambisa. Zagazola Makama, a counter-insurgency expert and security analyst in the lecture who confirmed the slaughter disclosed that, unknown to the Iswab group, Ngude and his team had staged an ambush against them in which at least 12 of them were killed in UA while others escaped with bullet wounds. At number 6, the Congress of University Academics has expressed its disappointment with the federal government, especially the Ministry of Labor and Employment, over the non-payment of its members' withheld salaries, explaining that the government was aware it did not partake in the strike action. Kunua, in a statement on Tuesday signed by its National President and Secretary and Publicity Secretary Dr. Niyi Sunmonu, Dr. Henry Oripoloye and Dr. Ennis Mwoke respectively said it was wrong for the FG to lump Kunua with members of the Academic Staff Union of Universities who went on eight month strike. The new union of lecturers viewed to sue FG for withholding its members' salaries. At number 7, the Nigerian Bar Association on Tuesday boycotted the call to bar ceremony of 4,711 new lawyers that were admitted into the legal profession. The legal body in a statement that was signed by its national president, Mr. Yakubu Michael, said its decision to shun the ceremony was based on the refusal of the chairman of the body of benches, Chief Wale Olanikbekun, to resign. MBS said in a letter it also copied the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Olukayode Ariwala, asked Chief Olanikbekun to step aside as the leader of the BOB following a claim explaining that the claim had a negative impact on the overall image and integrity of the legal profession in the country. At number 8, the General Officer Commanding 2 Division, Major General Aminu Chinade, says the current security challenges facing Nigeria are more complex than the past. In a statement issued on Tuesday in Ibadan by the Division's Deputy Director of Army Public Relations, Lieutenant Colonel Charles Ekeocha said the GOC stated this when Team 5 of the National Defense College cost 31 on National Study Tour of your State. Chinade, represented by the Division's Chief of Staff, Brigadier General Ismail Oloyede, and joined the team to analyze the challenges to provide lasting strategies to building socio-economic resilience under the prevailing contemporary security challenges. 
As number nine, the Bauchi State Commissioner of Education, Aliyu Usman Tilde, has resigned from his position as a member of the State Executive Council. He made this known via his Facebook page, saying the resignation took effect on Monday, December 5, 2022, after he had received a reply to that effect from the Office of the Secretary to the State Government following his letter of resignation to the SSG. Tilde has had a turbulent tenure as Education Commissioner because some drastic changes he tried to introduce into the reform of the education sector had caused him to be misunderstood on several occasions. Finally, at number 10, Minister of Interior Rahul Arabeshala said the Nigerian Correctional Service is becoming digitized as a command and a control room is now established at the national headquarters, while effective surveillance is mounted in the custodial centers to monitor the activities in some selected centers. Arabeshala stated this in his speech at the inauguration of Service Operational Vehicles, Junior Staff Quarters, Information and Communications Technology Command and Control Rooms, unveiling of new uniform for staff of the NCOS and presentation of award to selected staff for gallantry. He also said with this new development, inmates would be monitored without any violation of their rights. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.